Lord, I pray right now, Father, for uh, just your, your hand of mercy to be extended to us, Lord, and your grace, Lord, that we would have a true understanding of what it is and how wonderful your grace and how amazing your grace is, Lord, and I pray that you would give us that, that understanding, Lord, supernaturally to understand it, and Lord, we uh, just invite you to, to minister to us, Lord, that each and every single one of us need to be ministered and maybe in, ministered to in, in different ways. And, and Lord, I pray that by the power of your, your spirit that you would do that tonight, Lord, uh, minister to our hearts. Um, if there's any hurt, sadness, or pain, or uh, just anxieties, and uh, just anything, Lord, just we pray that you would help us to navigate through those emotions that uh, so easily can take control of us. So, Father, be glorified tonight in your people. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so um, Ephesians in chapter number five, I want to look at a verse there, a couple of verses there. Um, we went through Ephesians uh, maybe about a year ago or so uh, on Sunday mornings, and, and I, you know, just thoroughly enjoyed that. And, um, and the I'm going to read this verse here. Ephesians chapter 5, uh, looking at verse, starting at verse number 15. And um, and this is what it says. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15, it says, Paul, the apostle, he, he says this, he writes, See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, Redeeming the time because the, de the, the, the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of God. Um, this is a wonderful, wonderful passage right here. You know, and the reason why I wanted to talk about this, guys, here today is that, um, uh, as I shared when we first started here, uh, the past few days has been, for me personally, um, pretty difficult. And I know for even a lot of us as, as church family, um, the past day and a half or so has been a difficult time. Um, a couple of days ago, my, my cousin, I know that I've, I've asked you to pray for my cousin uh, several times. My cousin Rick, he's about five years older than me. And um, he passed away on Monday of a brain tumor that he had been battling with for about 26 months. And, um, you know, the Lord, you know, Lord saw his, you know, he ran his race, his, his, uh, this is it, you know. Um, so it's been kind of a bit of a challenge, you know, for my family and talking to my aunt, you know, um, my, uh, my family, this side of my family, they're, um, I'm going to over 50, 50 grandkids my, my, uh, my grandparents had. They had 12 children and uh, a lot of my aunts and uncles you know, they themselves uh, had like, you know, six kids and seven kids. My family, there was, there's only four of us, you know, we say only four of us. We were like the small family compared to the rest of my family, you know. Um, and so there's a lot of, a lot of us. So, so, but on this side of my family, this is the first cousin, you know, um, that had, uh, that's, that's with the Lord now that died, you know. So it's a pretty impactful on this side of my family. Um, talking with my aunts and my other cousins and everything, you know, it's just like, uh, you know, it's, it's hard. You know, it's, it's, it's difficult to navigate through, through times like this as a family. You know, um, there's, uh, you know, you have a lot of questions, what's why and everything and all the memories of when you were children. We were a very close family, you know, so we spent a lot of time together with my, um, you know, as kids with my cousin and everything. I'm sure you probably, you can think of some of your cousins and some of your close family relatives right now. You can think of, you know, um, when you were kids, you know, eight, nine years old, you know, going to the beach or playing in the pool at summer times, you know, um, weekends at grandma's house, all that, whatever, you know. Um, and so all those memories began to flood our minds and everything, you know. So uh, it's just been a difficult time. And then uh, just yesterday, 
uh, last night, as a matter of fact, in the evening time, got a phone call, and many of you know our, our dear friend, Jose Franco. Um, if you don't know him, I know, uh, if you see him, he was like, oh, I know Jose. He would always, he was at Hope Alive Church there early, you know, setting up our chairs, helping, serving, he, he, and staying late and sit, putting things away, you know, um, just a servant, um, I've known him for about 12 years. Well, right now, you guys, as we speak right now, um, he's taking his last breath. I just got a text message from his brother-in-law, Oscar, um, that uh, they, the family made the decision to, to just turn the machine off. And, uh, you know, how long, or however long it's going to take, you know, probably not that long. Um, and again, I, I really believe that as we're going to spend this time right now that he's going to be entered into heaven, you know. Um, and what was going on with him, uh, from what we, from what I understand, he had a, uh, he had developed a brain tumor and he didn't know it, um, had been dealing with some kind of illness and headaches for the past, uh, you know, few weeks or whatever, kind of like, oh, you know, I'm just not feeling good. And, uh, yesterday, I, I think, uh, yesterday was the day where he just, you know, was, really wasn't doing good at all and, and, uh, his work called his wife to go and pick him up and he his wife they he, they just got married four months ago you guys probably know nina nina would serve in our children's ministry and uh, because nina was serving in the children's ministry jose started serving in the children's ministry and um yeah he was just wanted to teach our fourth graders uh you know just some crazy you know theology he busted out, you know, the Zuck theology, book of theology. And I was like, bro, you know, <laughs> come on, man, teach him a Jesus story, you know. Uh, <laughs> but um, anyways, uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's on his way to heaven, you know. And um, you know, that's, a, that's a, for us, we sorrow, right? We're sad that that brings us a sadness. I know for some of you, you can just maybe think of some memories of, of Jose right now that you're thinking of. But um, you know, for him right now, it's like, you know, he is, is no, no sadness for him. It's just, uh, it, it's all good, right? He's going to be in the presence of his, of his maker. Well, guys, I wanted to look at this passage right here for us here tonight. Um, you know, again, I, I just really felt impressed by the Lord. You know, just the Lord led me to this. He redeemed the time because the days are evil. You know, what, and what is it that we're doing with our time you know, and, um, and not that, you know, it's evil in the sense that, you know, my, my cousin and Jose are, you know, are, you know, with the Lord, um, that happens. But I just wanted to kind of share this to encourage us, like, you know, because we, we go, th we, all of us go through stuff. You know, we, we go through things and, you know, we, we, we have our, our battles with our own flesh and we have our battles with stuff that's going on around us. You know, I think of just looking at our society and our culture that's going on around us, you know, and I don't know about you, but when I, when I focus, you know, seriously, when I focus on our society and what's going on in our culture around us today, it gets me frustrated and it, and it does. You know, it gets me, and it gets me so frustrated and, and, and everything that I get distracted to what God has called me to do, you know, because I feel like I just want to go and, you know, shake my fist and, and get upset and man, you know, just, I don't like those people, you know, Lord, you know, and, and, um, and I don't think that's what the Lord has called me personally to be like, you know, I don't like you, I don't like you, I don't like you. You know, it's like, I think he wants me and I think he wants us as Christians, you know, to, okay, well, um, what are we going to do to let the light of Jesus shine in our lives? You know, because the days in which we are living, they are evil. How are we using our time? Because there are people in this world that need to know the gospel, that need to know that Jesus loves them. You know, my cousin Ricky, who, who passed, um, it's funny, his, his name's Ricky, and when we were kids, um, we started calling him Ricky Martin, and I don't know if you know the band Menudo, um, so we would say, okay, hey, Menudo, you know, he'll get mad. Anyways, um, uh, but he was the first, he was the first um, cousin of mine that, that actually took me to a Christian event. He lived right there on the borderline of like North Long Beach and Compton area. 
um, that's where he lived, and um, his he started hanging out with some guys at his at his high school that started going to um, Calvary Chapel Downey, which wasn't too far from you know that that area right there. And um, and this I mean I'm, I'm talking this is probably 1982 81 you know um, I was like. 10, 11 years old, you know, um, I was into like break dancing, started to start becoming popular and everything. And um, uh, I remember he's like, come on, I'm going to take you to this concert. So I was kind of excited to go with my older cousin to a concert, but it was a rock concert. And I was like, man, the whole time I was just mad. Like, you know, I was a little kid, you know, I was like, I was mad. I want to be in a rock concert. I want to hear some funk, you know, some, some cool music, you know, and, and something we can boogie to, you know. And, um, and uh, but I, what I do remember is that at this, and I didn't even know I was at a church, really, you know, because the way it was, I was used to going to a church, you know, with all the stained glass and the Catholic church, you know, um, where they got the holy water when you walk in. You guys know what I'm talking about? Okay, yeah. Um, don't drink that water. It's not holy. <laughs> but um, the, the thing is, I remember, uh, I remember being at this concert, not mad. I wanted to leave. You know, here's these guys with this long hair and playing this, you know, guitars and rocking out and all this stuff. And, but I remember this, and when they were all done, I think it was Paul Duke, yeah. <laughs> um, I, but I, what I remember was this. I remember that this guy goes up and he had a Bible and he started talking about, you know, Jesus. I don't remember the content. I don't remember the words. I don't remember the, what part of the Bible. All I remember was that he had a Bible in his hand and he said something. And then all of a sudden, like a lot of people were like in the front, you know, and I stood in my chair. I was like, what is just going on here? You know? Um, well, that was my cousin. He, he, you know, he was, you know, he was, uh, what we say on fire for the Lord, you know, and he got very involved there at Calvary Chapel Downey. Um, so that was my first experience, you know, um, at like a Christian event where I heard the gospel. And the reason why I'm sharing this, you guys, is because I was thinking about this and that's when I believe, you know, cause that's my first memory of hearing the gospel in that way, you know, um, even though I don't remember, you know, uh, what it was, but that was when the seed was planted, you know, the seed, the seed of the gospel. The Bible, the Bible says that, that, you know, Jesus says his word is like a seed, right? And, um, yeah, maybe perhaps that seed fell on soil in my life at that, at a young age that was, you know, perhaps hard, you know, and it didn't take root, but, um, that seed didn't go anywhere. And over a process of time, you know, and, the people began to just be a part of, you know, come into my life, complete strangers. I remember you just, you know, talking about God and everything. And I, maybe I've rolled my eyes, maybe like, oh, I don't have time for this, but it was doing something to that seed that was in my heart, right? And, um, and by the grace of God, that seed took root and I understood the gospel for the first time in my life, you know, almost, almost 20 years ago, I think of that, wow. You know, and um, what, a, what a blessing. Um, but I, I just, I'm sharing this story, you guys, because as I was thinking about my cousin, I, he, even at that time, he was redeeming the time. He probably didn't even realize what he was doing. He was all excited, you know, to be a young Christian as a teenager and everything, a young teenager to, to take me and some other people to, to this concert. But to redeem the time and how we do that is by letting that light shine, right? Being filled with the Spirit. And that's how we let the light of God shine in our lives. You know, because there's no other light in you, you know, other than the light of Jesus Christ, right? Uh, you don't, we, 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 we can't conjure up a light, you know. Um, there isn't. You know, there's, there's nothing in us, really, that, that's really good that we can shine other than Jesus Christ. And the way that light shines is like, well, right here, as, the, as Paul writes there, he says not to be drunk with wine. He, again, he says this is all dissipation, right? But to be filled with the Spirit. You know, just don't, don't look to the foolish things of this world, whether it be wine or anything else. Anything foolish, it's empty. It's, it's not going to do any good. You know, it's not going to do any good. What, what will do you good 
what will do us good personally, but not just us only. When we're being filled with the Spirit, it's not just us that's, that's, that's benefiting from being filled with the Spirit. It's those that are around us as well. Those that are, because when we're filled with the Spirit, you know, it's really, you, you, you're just going to naturally, you know, walk, as it says, you know, walk, we're going to naturally walk circumspectly. Right, um, it says right there in verse number 15, we're going to naturally walk circumspectly or, or carefully, right? We're going to be mindful of where our steps are going. And when, when we're mindful of where our steps are going and how we're living our life is truly when we are filled with the Spirit. When we're not filled with the Spirit, it's like, man, we're going to do whatever we want to do. You know, we're going to just be led by our flesh, you know, the, the, car, the carnal, uh, the carnality in us is going to take over. And some of us, we know what that's like, even as Christians. You know, we, we, we lash out, we say things, we do things, you know, that, okay, man, we regret afterwards. And that's good if we, you know, you, you're, you're, you find, you, you, uh, you feel like, man, I, I messed up and we apologize and we repent, you know, and, and that's being filled, that's the spirit of God. That's the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Right, but when we're filled with the Spirit, we are. We will be mindful. We will be careful of where we're going to be stepping and living and, and, you know, kind of the course of life that we're going to be going in, you know. And, but it's important that we are filled with the Spirit in our life to redeem that time. And as Paul even goes on to say that, that again, the, the benefit of other people, because it's not just going to benefit us, it's going to benefit other people. First of all, I think it's going to benefit those that are closest to you, such as your family, right? Those that, that uh, you know, your mom, your dad, your, your wife, your, your husband, your, your children, you know, they're going to benefit from that. Why? Because, well, you're going to have this desire in your heart now and say, I want to, I want to speak good things. You know, I want to, I want to speak, as it says right here, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. You know, just speaking those good things and, and being joyful. And where it's going to begin at is going to be in, in, your, in your heart. But it's not just those closest to you. It's also going to affect those that are around you, the people that you work with. You know, your neighbors. You know, I think of that sometimes. I think of our, our neighbors that we live close by, you know. Um, and uh, I get it. You know, my, I talked to my, my, my brother and he's like, hey, do you know your neighbors? Ah, I see them every now and then, but I really, we really don't talk to one another. You know, I was like, wow. And I get it, you know. It's really easy to drive up into your house and, you know, maybe wave. Hey, say hi to Joe over there. He's kind of, hey, Joe, how you doing, you know. And just kind of go into your house, you know, uh, it's really easy to do that, you know. And, and um, a lot of us want to just, when we get home, we want to go home, you know. Just go and lay on the couch. I don't want to talk to Joe. He's cutting his grass. <laughs> you know, he don't want to cut, talk to me either, right? But I think that's some, you know, God put those neighbors there, you know. Um, that's where you live. And I think it would be good if we kind of make an effort, get to know your neighbors, you know, and that's one really cool thing. I, I'm really blessed, like where I get to live. Um, there's a, our, our neighbors, you know, even the neighbors that live around the corner, we just, we have a, and we got to know each other. It all started off really with a neighborhood watch. You know, we're like, hey, our cars are getting broken into. Let's get, you know, <laughs> let's put up our cameras and we got to find out who's doing this. That's how it all started off, right? But now it's like, you know, a um, few times throughout the year, um, we'll just send a text message to our neighborhood watch group you know, and hey, let's, let's all go out to have dinner, you know. And so a group of us will, will go out and have dinner and everything. But I, I like that because my wife and I were like, oh, are they Christians? I'm like, no, they're not Christians, you know. And she's like, you know, I go, but I think that's great. Let's go out with these non-Christians and be a light, you know. And I remember our first time we all went out. You know, we went out to, to dinner and had sushi and everything. And, you know, before the dinner's coming, they're all ordering their, their drinks and everything. And, you know, and me and Dana, we, we ordered our drinks, you know, with, you know, water, you know, water with lime or lemon, you know. And uh, the you guys don't want to drink. I said, no, no, we're good, you know. And then, but it was really cool because that sparked a conversation of, 
you know, us being, you know, me being a pastor and working at a church, all of a sudden their drink got really, you know, all the ice melted in their drinks and everything. You know, they kind of waited for us to go to the bathroom so they can drink their beers and drink their drinks, you know. Um, you know, it's kind of interesting. But in that, now, you know, it's been a few, you know, it's been, you know, just about 10 years that we live there now. And um, it's really cool because now these neighbors, like when they got stuff going on in their families or, you know, just stuff that's going on, I'll, I'll get a text. Hey, Tommy, can, can, you, can I come over? Are you, are you around? Are you at your house? And I'm like, yeah, man, I'll be there. Or yeah, I'm here, whatever. And you know, we talk, hey, my, my nephew, this is what's going on. Or hey, this is what's happening. Can you help us? My mom is looking for you know, someone to help her with this. They got some things going on and it has to do with you know, bringing the gospel. You know? And, and that's, man, praise the Lord you know, that, that that happens. But guys, it's not just, you know, please, I don't want us to feel like, well, yeah, Tommy, well, you're a pastor. That's kind of your job. Um, it's not my job because I'm a Christian. I mean, because I'm a pastor. It's my job because I'm a, I'm a pa- uh, Christian. Oh, a little tongue twisted there. It's my job because I'm a Christian. Just like it's your job because you're a Christian, you know? And um, uh, I was just checking my phone. I, I asked Oscar to text me when, you know, everything happens and... Um, it was an Oscar. I shouldn't have looked at it. Sorry. But um, anyways, you know, it, it's not my job or it's our job because we're Christians to be filled with the spirit so that we can, you know, make melody in our heart and, and you know, minister to one another and, and, and everything that we do, giving thanks in all things as it says, giving thanks for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Submitting one to another, you know, and the only way that we can, I think as Christians, right? I'm talking to Christians here. The only way for us as Christians to, well, submit one to another or to sing these hymns and to have this melody in our heart. The only way that we as Christians can walk circumspectly, you know, live our life carefully, in other words, you know, we're living our life carefully. We're living our life mindfully. The only way we as Christians can be mindful of the time that God has given to us to redeem it is by being filled with the Spirit. The only way we can do any of these things, the only way we can submit one to another is by being filled with the Spirit. The only way that we can walk circumspectly, redeem the time, The only way that we can do any of these things is by being filled with the Holy Spirit, with God, the Holy Spirit. The person of the Holy Spirit. You know, we have several, maybe a few months back now, we we did this, we went through on Sunday mornings talking about the person of the Holy Spirit, God, the Holy Spirit. You know, the the, the third um, person in the Godhead of the Trinity, And I I think a lot for us as Christians in the church, there's a a lot of maybe misunderstanding of who the person of God, the Holy Spirit is. I think there's, um, you know, a lot of hesitation to, you know, want to be filled with the Holy Spirit because, well, I don't want to, you know, I I don't want to start doing the flip-flop on the floor. You know, and I think that's just because there's, there's no understanding of who God the Holy Spirit is. You're filled with the God the Holy Spirit. I promise you, you will not do the flip-flop on the floor. You know, that's not what's gonna happen. I will say what will happen is that you will find that you'll begin to live your life carefully. You'll begin to live your life circumspectly. You'll begin to be you know, mindful of the time and every moment that God has given to you to make much of Jesus every single day of every single hour, you know, by being filled with the Holy Spirit, by being mindful of God, the Holy Spirit, you know, in you and upon you. Being filled with the Holy Spirit, you'll you'll want to, um, you'll want to be a minister. You'll want to be one that's going to encourage and, 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 and speak blessings, if you will, you know? And how is it that we speak blessings? I'm not saying we go around like, oh, I bless thee, you know? No, 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 no. 
Speaking blessings, guys, is, is speaking the word of God. Speaking blessings to people is speaking the word of God to people. You know, and, and you don't have to speak the word of God, you know, uh, word for word. And, and that's good if you can, if you, you know, that's, that means you have a really good memory. But really by, by speak, speaking blessings is by being inspired, you know, by the truth of God's word. Not taking it out of context, not, you know, being spiritualizing scripture, but by looking at scripture and the promises of scripture and saying, you know what, I can share something to somebody today. And it may not be word for word. And again, as I said, you don't have to, but you can be inspired by the truth of God's word. The only way we can do that is by being filled with the Holy Spirit. That's what's going to happen. You'll be doing those things. You know what else will happen by being filled with the Spirit? You, you won't be living a prideful and arrogant life like somebody owes you something. You'll, you'll, you'll be living that humble life. You know where humility really needs to be uh, exemplified in, our, in all of our lives, especially, especially for lives of, of Christians, is in the home, you know? I think it's a lot, of, it's a, it, for me at least, I'm confessing a feeling right now, you know? Um... <laughs> for me, it's, it's real easy to be humble and to behave humbly outside of my home. You know, I think inside my home, it's, it's, uh, it's a lot harder. I don't know. Again, maybe, maybe you can, you know, identify with me and say amen. Or maybe you're like, man, if not, pray for me, man, you know. Um, but I'm just saying that that's really, you know, because a lot of times we just like, okay, we, we're at home. It's like, oh, you know. But it's in the home. But you guys, all these things is by being filled with the Spirit. That's, that's what's really important. And the one thing I wanna, I'm going to end with this is time. Being filled with the Spirit because, you know, every breath that we take, you know, is that much closer to the last breath we have. You know? It just... It just is. Every breath. And so it's like, okay, well, time is precious. You know? Think of the time that we have. Every, every single moment. It, it is precious. You know? And it slips away out of our hands. You know? It's just, it's, it's going. Tick tock, right? We need to redeem the time. In other words, use the time for the sake of Christ in our life. You know, listen, it's not like, Christians is not like we have a time clock, okay? Your time clock is when you go to work, so don't be late, right? That's where you have the time clock. We don't have a time clock as Christians. We don't punch in and punch out, say, hey, I put my two hours in on Sunday morning, I'm good. No, that's not how it works. You know, it's every moment of every time, of, of every day. You know, we take advantage of that time because, again, you know, tomorrow is promised to nobody, right? It's not in the Bible, by the way, but, you know, it's true. And so the day that we do have, the moments that you do have, let's redeem it. Let's, you know, for the sake of Christ, I, wanna, I want the time that I have be, to be used for the sake of Christ when you're at work. You know, when you're with your neighbors, you know, just, man, that's what I want to do. And when you're filled with the Spirit, that'll, it'll help you. You know, I, I, again, I was inspired to kind of just share this. Um, I was praying today, you know, after I left the hospital and just like, Lord, you know, this is where my heart's at. I, you know, I just feel like I want to just... I want to love on the church. I want to love on your people. I want to encourage them because, you know, again, personally, it seems like as death has been, you know, one right after another. And, um, you know, I just want to say, man, guys, I, number one, I love you. I love you all. You know, I, I care about you and your families. I really, really do. And I also want to encourage you. Like if I can, if I can light a fire under you, like, come on, let's do this. Let's do this together. I, I, you know, I would, but that's not my job. That's, that's up to God. You know, that's, that's his business. And, and, and he will do it if you allow him, 
If you allow God and say, God, fill me with your spirit. Lord, set that fire uh, in me. I, I, wanna, I wanna have that passion. I wanna redeem the time. You know, if you feel like God is showing you some things that you haven't been, well, that's the Lord in his grace ministering to you, you know? But that's what, that, that's what I wanted to do in, in, uh, tonight, you know, and just share that. And um, I hope you're encouraged, you know, um, because as I was just talking to Jose's family, um, you know, it just seemed like, yeah, he hadn't been feeling too well, but, and someone was telling me that, you know, on Sunday at church, he was pretty normal, you know, laughing, kind of his normal self, you know, and okay, and, and then here we are from one day to the next, you know, and I know that many of us probably have experienced or heard stories of, you know, people tragically being taken, you know, away from us. Um, let's redeem the time. Amen.